Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today is a really quick video about what it's like to be a student at the University of Oxford or the University of Cambridge. In particular, I'll be talking about the teaching styles at these universities. If you are thinking about applying to one of these two universities, it's important to have an understanding of the teaching styles as it is one of the reasons why these two universities are set apart from the other universities in the UK. The teaching style at the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge is a topic that is discussed a lot by prospective students. It's also something that can come up in an interview. So if you are asked about it in an interview, it's important that you show some sort of understanding of the teaching styles. If you're new to this channel, my name is Brian. I am a junior doctor working in London. I study medicine at the University of Cambridge and at Imperial College in London, where I also completed my PhD. I'm also the founder and the president of Into Med School. We're an organization that helped provide free support and mentorship for children all over the UK from disadvantaged areas looking to study medicine at university. So despite the differences, the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge, collectively known as Oxbridge, offer actually very similar teaching styles for their students. So the first thing I want to look at is the staff to student ratio. At the University of Oxford, there are typically just over 20,000 students. Cambridge is slightly smaller and typically sits at just under 20,000 students. Now, this is very important when we start thinking about the staff to student ratio. At the University of Cambridge, the latest figures show that there is a member of staff for every 11 students. University of Oxford is very similar. There's a member of staff for every 11.1 .1 students. The staff to student ratio is very important as it is one of the main determinants in the amount of support that a student can get through their studies. These ratios of one for every 11 students and one for every 11.1 .1 students allows the two universities sit very high in the league tables. These two universities sit at number three and number four out of all the medical schools in the UK in the league tables determined by the staff to student ratio. To put this into some context, towards the other end of the scale, there are universities which have one member of staff for every 20 or so students. This very low ratio of number of students for every staff member is a great platform for these two universities to deliver high quality teaching. The next thing I want to talk about are the term dates. At the University of Oxford and at the University of Cambridge, the terms are typically eight weeks long. This is really short when you consider other universities typically have terms that are 10 to 14 weeks long. Now, when you think there are three terms in a year and each term is eight weeks long, in total, the terms amass to 24 weeks. When you consider a whole year, that means you spend over half the year actually on the holiday. So when you take the high quality teaching together the, with the very short term times, you can imagine that the terms are very busy. When I was studying at the University of Cambridge, between Mondays to, and Fridays, nine till five, I would be in lectures or in practicals. In the evenings and on Saturdays, I would be in small personalized teaching sessions that were called supervisions. In Oxford, these are called tutorials, but they're the same thing, basically. So I'm going to talk a bit more about these supervisions or tutorials. These are one hour long sessions and typically, depending on the subject that you study and the college you're at, you'll typically get around three to six hours of this every week. Generally, you are put in a small group with potentially one or even two other students. You then sit down with a lecturer or an expert within the field to discuss the topic so that you are able to go above and beyond the knowledge that is explored within a lecture. To a lot of people, these sound very daunting. And truthfully, as someone who had to go through it for, for quite a few years, these are very scary, especially at first. There's definitely something very surreal about being in this really old room with one or two other medical students talking about this really niche receptor involved in the human immune response and then sat opposite you on the table is the individuals who actually discovered the receptor. 
However, once you get over the initial fear, you can actually understand that these sessions are very challenging, but they're designed for you to develop well thought out analytical arguments with the help of an expert within the field. And then once you realize this, you can really then understand why the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge are considered the two best universities in the country, if not in the world. This style of teaching is honestly very frightening, especially at first, but there are times when it's, and this might sound very uh, nerdy, but it can be very exhilarating as well. This style of teaching is unique to Oxbridge and is one of the main reasons why they produce so many great academics. It's also one of the reasons why graduates are so sought after by employers once they graduate from these universities. So that's a very quick video about the teaching styles at the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge. If you have any questions or any comments, please put them in the section below. If you like this video and you're interested in future content, then please feel free to subscribe. Finally, thank you very much for watching this video and for subscribing. That's everything from me for today. I hope to see you next time.